This is the story of a gooey little game that could. Since the day this exuberant glob of puzzles dripped onto Nintendo's WiiWare service, World of Goo has received more honors and accolades than many retail games costing three times as much. Sliming its way into the hearts of critics and writers across the country, World of Goo is widely regarded as one of the best and most innovative games not only on WiiWare, but on the Wii, period. In fact, according to one website that aggregates reviews from some of the most prominent voices in the games press, only three Wii games to date have received higher aggregate scores than World of Goo. Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario Galaxy 2, and The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. And on a Nintendo platform, there's no company more elite than that. Oozing with originality and a refreshing sense of enthusiasm evident in virtually every aspect of its design, World of Goo is an outstanding specimen of innovation in video games. But take the praise it's received with a grain of salt. World of Goo may be the best game on WiiWare, but to rank it among the four best games on the platform is a bit of a stretch. It's easily one of the six or seven best, though. It's just not as good as Metroid. Perhaps as much as the game itself, what makes World of Goo so remarkable is the story behind it. The game was made by 2D Boy, an independent development studio founded by two guys who used to work at Electronic Arts. Of course, to call 2D Boy an independent development studio is a generous overstatement to say the least, as it's literally nothing more than two guys, and their studio was any coffee shop they could find that offered free Wi-Fi. World of Goo was conceived and created by just a couple of guys with laptops in a coffee shop. A fascinating tale which speaks both to their creativity and the lack of which is often displayed by the industry's biggest development houses. Evidently, millions of dollars in resources and budgets still can't buy a good idea. And if nothing else, World of Goo is definitely a good idea. An intoxicating and sometimes eerie amalgam of unique influences. The visuals are Tim Burton, the music is Danny Elfman, and the gameplay is undeniably Isaac Newton. World of Goo is a physics-based puzzler which tells a strangely compelling tale about living blobs of goo and a mysterious corporation which harvests them for use in everything from cosmetics to, most prominently, a bizarre drink. This game isn't really about story, but its distinct art style and music create an often unsettling atmosphere which, at the very least, leaves you curious about the corporation's intentions and the significance of these strange balls of goo. This mood is helped along by the cryptic messages left by the enigmatic sign painter, a mysterious figure who has scrawled notes upon wooden signposts in each of the game's nearly 50 levels. Sometimes they're funny, sometimes they offer hints, but often they're every bit as bizarre as the rest of the game. Interesting as its story may be for a puzzle game, the main attractions in World of Goo are the aforementioned visuals and music, and the endlessly compelling gameplay, which is what keeps you playing World of Goo. The game is built upon a simple concept, get the goo globs to the pipe. But fulfilling this objective is a much more difficult proposition, as you'll have to build all sorts of gelatinous structures and overcome goo-splattering obstacles to do so. You'll have to build towers and bridges, all of which jiggle like jello and really test your knowledge of physics. Indeed, while it may seem as though you're playing with two-eyed blobs, what you're really playing with in World of Goo is gravity, and you'll need a keen understanding of it to fulfill each level's quota of goo. The concept is simple enough that anyone can understand it, but as with the very best video games, World of Goo elaborates upon it as well. There are several different species of goo with unique abilities which diversify the gameplay and force you to adapt your construction strategies, and the difficulty steadily ramps up until you find yourself building incredibly complex structures that rely on support beams, clever physics, and of course, plenty of goo. 
World of Goo is also available on Windows and Mac OS X, but I'm playing the WiiWare version here, which uses the Wii Remote to point at goo balls and drag them into your structures, and it feels very smooth and satisfying. Whichever version you go with, however, you'll be experiencing an incredible release, which by itself epitomizes the reasons for the digital distribution of tiny budget games with mega budget ideas. With aesthetic charms and a clever originality that rivals some of the best full priced Wii games, every Wii owner should consider getting gooey in the Edward Scissorhands meets Newton's Apple realm of World of Goo. <laughs>